We had a fair amount of trouble with doing video using DSLR cameras, our Nikons. They're not really suited to doing a great deal of video. They like fixed focus and they tend to make a lot of noise when they're trying to autofocus. So although the little hand cameras are losing popularity now, we decided we'd switch back to one of those. And we ended up with this particular model. Panasonic HCV785. We've been using it to film on the trip we're on at the moment and we're only out for three days this time. But just some overall impressions of the camera. Good things, bad things. Lightweight, easy to use. Comes with a built-in light, which is at the top here. Automatic shutter. Opens and closes as you turn it on and off. It does have a manual focus ring if you want to change focus. The automatic focus on this is probably good enough that you're never really going to need to autofocus. Has for some reason a 5.1 channel microphone set up on top. It is supposed to be... What does it say on here? It is <laughs> a little label, a little label across here that says windshield. I haven't really noticed that that makes a hell of a lot of difference when we've been filming. We still get a lot of wind noise on the camera, so an external mic is preferable. And thankfully, this particular model does have a 3.5mm microphone jack on it. I'm not going to do a full rundown of the camera. This is not a really a full review. It's just some general comments on what we've been doing so far and how we found the camera in comparison to using a DSLR. Touch screen, which is now become pretty common. Even our very old video camera that we stopped using years ago had a touch screen on it. Quite responsive. I've turned off the sound. This it comes it starts with the sound turned on it becomes irritating after a while this is only up to 1080p it's not a 4k camera but we don't use 4k so it wasn't a concern for me it was sold to me on the basis that it had a 50 times optical zoom uh, that turned out not to be true so i'm not very happy with uh, what i was told about that the optical zoom is only up to 20 times the eye what they call the eye zoom uh, enhances that to 50 times. I have found that that's quite good even though it's not full optical. Zoom does go out on digital they say to 1500 as you can probably see on the screen there. Uh, digital zoom is pure nonsense. Nobody should ever look at it for anything. It's a complete and utter waste of time. It allows you to record in MP4 which is useful. You don't have to do any conversions or mucking around. The biggest complaint I've got about it is the recharge port. As you can see, that is not a USB, even though the other end of the cable is a USB. So instead of having a micro USB port on here, as you would probably expect to have these days, they've gone for a proprietary connection, which is honestly stupid. There's no reason for it. They've got plenty of space in there to put a micro USB and to go for a proprietary cable for recharging when the recharging cable is in effect a USB cable is just flat out stupid. Apart from that the little trap door at the bottom for the SD card tends to flip open a little bit too easily for my liking. All you have to do is just touch it and it comes open but at least the card itself won't fall out because it is clipped in. You have to actually push the card up to bring it back out. It does take a full size SD card, uh, class 10 or better. One of the useful attributes it has a shoe adapter. That is very handy for attaching a microphone or lights or whatever else you want to put onto the, the shoe. It's a cold shoe, it's not a hot shoe, so it's not going to fire off a flash or anything like that. But that's a very useful little attachment. Could be a little bit of a nuisance 
when you're packing it away so I assume that's where they've made it detachable but that's a very handy little addition to this particular camera controls are very straightforward video record on this side uh, taking photographs let's just fire a button on the top and your wide and your telephoto lens adjustment on the side you switch between recording and viewing you have a level sensor on there I really haven't worked out quite how useful that is yet it has Wi-Fi so it's controllable via your phone not really 100% sure that that's going to be useful yet but it could be at some stage I guess and you have the on off button here it does have an old AV connection why on earth anybody would bother with that these days I'm really not sure that's for the old fashioned uh, video output it has full HDMI connections and it has a USB connection here that one I will investigate further later on haven't used it yet to see exactly what it does it could be just for data transfer instead of removing the card a number of options on the menu which really I don't need to go through good little compact camera it does have video stabilization I'm going to do a little test now we're going to take out I'm filming this using the GoPro and our ordinary gimbal so we'll take this outside and we'll do a side by side comparison or just a little walk around of the campsite here and you can see whether the video stabilization on the Panasonic actually stacks up against a proper gimbal so we'll take that outside now and give it a go okay this is a side by side comparison the Panasonic with video stabilization on compared to the GoPro on a gimbal we'll just have a little walk around I suspect that the footage from the GoPro is going to be significantly better at the moment we just parked up at the RV the 72 hour RV rest area at Jarradale and it will be very interesting to compare this side by side because I can feel as I'm walking that the Panasonic camera is moving substantially more than the GoPro let's do a bit of a pan around it will be quite interesting to see how they compare to each other the video stabilization on the Panasonic is touted as being very good I have to be honest and say while I'm watching the screen it does seem reasonable but I really doubt that it's going to be able to stack up against the proper gimbal only a very brief trip this time unfortunately just three nights out and we're on our way home this morning Might as well go through the facilities here at Jarradale. This is part of the old mill site. It's been redeveloped a bit to cater for RVs. Must be self-contained to stay here. Dump point directly in front of me there. Bins. And on the upright green pole is town water so a very useful place for RVs as long as they don't come in and abuse the site this is no water to ground we'll see how the wind is going on both these cameras too how the microphones stack up against each other they'll probably both be bad as far as the wind is concerned because I'm just using the native mics on the cameras I've not got an external mic on as we turn around that wind noise should be pretty bad Oh, 
full credit to Jarradale and the people here for making this facility available. Lovely little town, some interesting historic buildings, good places to see nearby, Serpentine Dam, Pipehead Dam, Langford Park and a number of really good walk trails through the area. If you go to the visitor centre you can pick up some maps there, they're a couple of dollars each and that just helps go towards the expenses of running the facilities. The RV rest area I should point out at current at the current time is free so you can stay here for three nights as long as you are in a fully self-contained vehicle. Okay that should be enough of a test. I'll only really get to see how that goes when we get it on the big screen when I get home. <laughs>